Labor Day weekend's officially coming on in Chicago. That means Bears season is in the air. The Bears are going to open up their season on Sunday night against the Los Angeles Rams. But before that, we're going to be doing our season preview. What's up, guys? Welcome into the Fireside Bears YouTube channel. You know us. We're your host, Usaid Kosho and Max Smith. You can follow us on Twitter at Usaid Kosho and at Max Smith ESM. To preview the Bears season, we've got a great guest on. His name is Ken Davis. You can follow him on Twitter at That's Davis. He hosts the under, or he's one of the co-hosts for the under, under Center Bears podcast for NBC Sports Chicago. So a lot of great insights going to be provided for you guys on this episode. But Ken, what's going on? Thanks so much for being on here. Hey, you said, hey, Max, how are you two doing? Um, nothing's going on. Getting in the house for picking up my kids in this rain. I'm happy that I made it on here in time. So I'm ready to talk some Bears and hopefully the season will be good and I won't be frustrated. Heard that. That's what I'm really worried about. I'm worried about <laughs> recording shows angrily. All right. Like just, oh, I can't believe like I was talking. We recorded under center today. It'll be out tomorrow. And I was talking about last year. Forget the six game losing streak, how stressed I was just the first five games. And they had a they, they had a good record. But those early games last year were some of the most stressful Bears games I've ever been a part of. I, I I was talking to. I remember talking to the old lady. And she's like, "They're winning. What? What's wrong?" And I'm like, "It's how they're winning, right?" And to go from that, and to the draft, and then now to training camp with some things that I don't think all of us really like as far as injuries taking place. It just has me it's slightly perplexed that I may be upset this season. And it's it's. I guess it's going to make good content, but it's not something that I really want to do. I think even worse is when you start recording and you're kind of in an okay mood and then you think about it and then you start thinking about what happened that week. You're like, wait a second. No, I, I'm not okay anymore. No, I'm angry. We have a couple of those recordings over the past couple of months. Definitely. When we started them off fine and the more you think about it, the more you convince yourself to be upset. You're like, wow, uh, things aren't going as well as maybe I thought they were just 10 minutes ago, but here we are. So we appreciate you coming on. And um, yeah, there's definitely a lot to talk about storyline wise as we enter this season. From, uh, of course, Justin Fields, but then we're talking about roster issues, potential depth issues, um, some incredibly tough competition that we're looking at. So we prepared some questions and uh, we said, I think you can take it over. Yeah, let's get right into the first one. I mean, it's been set in stone since April 29th when the Bears drafted Justin Fields that the theme of 2021 was going to be all about Justin Fields. Prior to that, there was nothing really to look forward to. But outside of Justin, I have to ask you, I mean, What's something that you find exciting or yeah, something that you think is going to be exciting about the upcoming season? You know, I want to say David Montgomery, but I'm not because I don't know if I can trust Matt Nagy to really stick to the run. So I'm going to go with the defense because I think the defense is going to be better than it was this last two seasons. Um, you got Eddie Goldman coming back. If you just think about how they got ran on early last year until kind of Bilal Nichols kind of really got used to playing those towards the end of the season. Now you got Bilal back in his natural position as a five technique guy. You got Goldman. Robert Quinn has to be better. Like, I think he can just run into a couple sacks. So I think um, I'm kind of excited to see what Sean Desai does with this with this defense, I would say, outside of Justin Fields, if I can't put Justin Fields. Yeah, I, I think um, perfectly said. I think uh, it's incredibly exciting to see Goldman and Nichols back. I think Nichols is one of the most vastly underrated players on this defense. Um, I think that they're walking with a bit of a chip on their shoulder this year to kind of prove who they are, uh, especially after the disappointments in 19 and 20, that in 21 maybe under Desai kind of returning to the Chuck Pagano. You have some of the secondary holdovers, really kind of just Eddie Jackson, uh, that obviously did incredibly well. Uh, under uh, uh, a Vic Fangio scheme, which Sean Desai will, will model his uh, secondary off of. So hopefully he returns to form. Uh, but you're completely right on Robert Quinn. And I think that, you know, we we are kind of putting the wrong shape in the wrong hole with Robert Quinn. He himself has stated that he's not really used to playing the outside linebacker position where he's not on the ground, ready to get into a tackle's face. Um but what I think is even more interesting, and I think that this is a storyline that, that'll follow. You can go ahead and tell me if I'm wrong or not. But I think that Travis Gibson is there, like licking his lips, ready for Robert Quinn to mess up at any moment, especially after the beast of the preseason that he just had. He is a true and natural outside linebacker in this 3-4. What are your thoughts there? 
Um, I've been looking for Travis Gibson since last summer, I mean, last year when they drafted him. Sure. Um, I, I've been saying, and it's funny, we were talking to Alex Brown. This was after the draft. And I, I compared what I wanted Travis Gibson to be is what Mark Anderson was, right? And it was funny because if you remember, Mark Anderson took Alex Brown's job. They gave it. They, he didn't take it. They gave it to him, right? But it was funny now, and when and and, and uh, Alex Brown kept talking about Mark Anderson glowingly, and I said, "That's wild for you to talk about him glowingly." And they gave this man your job and have to give it back to you. But I, I, when I think about Travis Gibson, my thoughts my thoughts have been, I wish the Bears just had a one trick pony rusher. You know, what I'm saying edge rusher. You know, like he doesn't have to be well rounded. He doesn't have to be someone that can play the run in the pass. You just need to give me somebody outside of Khalil Mack on the other side that can get in sacks. So I'm with you. If you're if he's in that rotation and you don't keep those guys healthy, I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's years out and it's a project. Maybe they'll get something from Charles Snowden. It's a bit much for me to say they. I'm talking about years away, but still with him being a, a fringe guy. But just when you see those those traits, it just makes you think, ah, oh, you may have an edge rusher. But I hope. Travis Gibson is that guy, Max. Um, he's someone I've been looking forward to seeing. And he, the beginning of preseason, he seemed a bit out of place. or no, He didn't seem comfortable is what I should say. You started to see that towards the last game where he, he seemed like he was in his own element. So that's good going into the season. Yeah, that pass rush is going to be such a – integral part of what the Bears do just the front seven in general I think is going to be better this year because the man in the middle Eddie Goldman's coming back but I have to ask you I mean Ryan Pace stated in his pre-draft presser or the presser who's right before the start of free agency he's like hey listen we have a playoff ready roster because we've been in the playoffs two of the last three seasons and I see Max shaking his head because I think when he said that Kyle Fuller was still on the roster I mean how true do you believe that statement is in terms of the Bears having a playoff ready roster. Um, they, uh, the Bears have enough talent to make the playoffs. Let me say that. But with the offensive line being in disarray, I couldn't tell you, you know, like that going from thinking the offensive line would be a plus to a certain degree, because you never know with the rookie taking on a job that he's never taken on before and referring to Seven Jenkins, who's now out. Um, you still had hope, but now seeing that now you're, you're basically at both tackles are like this. Jermaine O'Fetty did come along last year at the, at the right side. Asking Jason Peters to play an entire season is a lot, but I think they have the talent. I don't know if they have the coaching to answer your question. You said, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know if they have the, the coaching and I, I, that's, I think the proof that's proven. I mean, they the deep thing about it like this, and I said this to Matt Nagy himself. And I hate to say this, but basically you're holding this whole thing up because the defense is good. The special teams has been has been good until they let Cordero Patterson go. We'll see how the special teams are this season. Um, but really the offense has been shaky, and you you run the offense. So like it it, it depends on Matt Nagy. And to answer your question, I don't I don't I don't I want to say I don't think I can depend on Matt Nagy, but if I was really being honest with you, as of right now, I can't count on Matt Nagy. So yeah, no, I, I, to answer your question, then <laughs> I guess it's no. Yeah, I was gonna sum it up. I was like, that sounds like a no. Um yeah. <laughs> we'll just put it out there. Um yeah, one one hundred percent there. Uh what, what I think is so interesting is again, I tweeted this out earlier today. Khalil Herbert is such a natural talent. I think he's fantastic. The fact that we have another kick returner that we can just continue the tradition of speedy, elusive guys who just have a ton of burst. Uh, he might be anything but a gadget guy at the end of the day on the offense, but he's going to be a solid kick return option, and he might turn into a solid every down back later on his career. But, of course, we'll see how it shapes up with David Montgomery. Um, there's a ton of talent on this roster. My biggest concern is depth at some of the key positional players that – we have 20, we have one, we have the oldest roster in the NFL at this point. That doesn't mean that it's an untalented roster. Um, it's just that we have an incredible lack of talented depth uh, sitting on the bench. We have some absolute knockouts uh, on both sides of the ball. But the reason why Matt Nagy's been to the playoffs two, two out of three years is because we've had a defense that's been consistently in the top half of the league the past two years, our past three years. Um, this could be Matt Nagy's first losing record. Uh, and I, I just don't see how he stays in Chicago much longer after that. Um, but I also see how he does. 
because this would be his first year with a losing record. So um, there's definitely a lot to look at. Uh, I think we're on the general consensus that this isn't really a playoff roster, which is a hard thing to say because there are players, talented players who have given a lot to this team over the past couple of years that are missing the window to go far in the playoffs. Um, but even if if this team did sneak into the playoffs, which of course every Bears fan wants to see us our team go far, um, reason, reasonably we wouldn't go very far because of our lack of talented depth and how old this team is. Uh, you know, especially in the playoffs, you're going to rely on some of your younger, fresher guys, and I just don't know if that could happen. I agree. I mean, that's great points to say the least. Um, again, and I'll ask you this. Let me ask you to this. How would it feel sneaking in the playoffs again? Because it didn't feel good last year, that backdooring in, especially after the season being as as, as terrible as it was. It, it didn't feel like an accomplishment, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, I'll go first here, and then I'll bounce it over to Max. But it didn't – you're right. It didn't feel like an accomplishment specifically because you start off 5-1, and one, and, again, the first five to six games of the season last year – Every Bears fan was kind of going through this, oh, well, the national media keeps picking against the Bears and we keep proving the national media wrong or the Bears keep proving the national media wrong. And then you enter in a six-game win streak where it was just up and down after up and down. There were a couple quarterback changes. I mean, the Bears went through basically three they changed the quarterback three times last year from Trubisky to Bowles back to the Trubisky. And then all of a sudden you have that week 17 game where it's at home. You have an opportunity to get to the playoffs. And I think I would have felt more comfortable with the bears getting into the playoffs. Had they beat green Bay, not the other way around where they kind of got slapped in the face at home in a game that was really close up until like halfway through the third quarter. Water, and then you go to this Mercedes-Benz Superdome the very next week and you just get absolutely slapped in the face in a game that honestly should not have ended up only being an 11-point loss. Mm-hmm. If Wims catches that pass and if Roquan Smith starts, I think that game – sorry, I'm in Florida. There's a massive thunderstorm right outside my window. Apologies. Uh, but if Roquan Smith starts that game and, and Javon Wims catches that pass, I think that game ends up differently. Um, I don't really know how I feel about us making the playoffs last year. I just like bragging to Vikings and Lions fans that we're in the playoffs again. Um, and then, of course, ammunition on Twitter is, you know, hey – did the Packers go to the Super Bowl last year? Congratulations, you were the second biggest loser. So, who cares? So, I mean, you know, that, that's how I feel. Especially, like, going deep in the playoffs. Like, who cares? You made it to the playoffs. You didn't come home with the Lombardi. So, why are you bragging that you lost another conference championship? But, anyways, that's 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 me. Uh, but even if we do sneak in again this year, I'll still use the same arguments on Twitter. But I really won't <laughs> feel that great. Um, I'll just be, you know, at, if we do sneak in the playoffs, that means Justin Fields started halfway through the season, of course. Uh, then I'll feel good and I'll go, okay, we got our guys some reps. We got our guys some dubs. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's just as a fan, you're even just like, do we deserve this? Are we, are we frauds? Like, did we kind of fall onto this? And honestly, if it wasn't for Arizona kind of blowing up halfway through the season, there's no reason we should be in the playoffs. Uh, right. That Arizona team absolutely deserved that spot, in my opinion, more than we did because Kyler Murray was butting into a fantastic young talent, one of the top quarterbacks in the league. Everything was coming together, and it's the Cardinals. Everyone wants to see them win because they barely ever won, and they're like 100-plus year existed. So it's, it was a good storyline. I hope they do well this year. A little bit of a Cardinals guy, a little bit of a Kyle Murray guy, but moving on. Um, uh, so let's, let's, let's backtrack to the defense here. Um, what are your thoughts on Sean Desai, and, and what have you seen from him over the past couple of months that – Makes you think, if, if you do, that there's a chance for this defense to return to its 2018 form. I don't know, to be honest with you. I, I have to really see it when the, when the bullets are live compared to when it's in practice or even in preseason. I did a lot. What I saw in the first game, and for me, one, I hope he's in the booth. I, I, felt, I felt that maybe being around the players and feeling that energy maybe doesn't allow him to be clear-headed. Um, and I, that's just my opinion. I could clearly I could be wrong or misinformed. Um, I'm hoping that we get something closer to Vic Fangio since he's a disciple. I think most people close to the Bears have heard about Sean Desai for years, and we know how intelligent he is, and we know that he that he's a teacher. Like this, even before he got the job, 
those are the things we used to hear from the DBs talking about Sean Desai. Um, so I'm I'm hoping that he's the right person. A part of me though. What did a, a coach who is uh, on his, um, I don't know, his last chance perhaps to be the coach of the team? A lot of defensive coordinators aren't going to come so they can be for one year and get fired with you. So it, it, I think it would be different if Matt Nagy was in a better position and chose Sean Desai. I would then feel like he's doing it from a position of strength where part of me feels like he's doing it from a position of weakness because who else was going to come here if Matt Nagy may be on the, on his final year as the BS head coach. But as far as how I feel about him, I think he may be the, the, the right coach, but I'm going to really hold out for the first quarter of the season to see how his play calling is, is going to evolve depending from team to team and what he sees out there on the field. You can go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, see, Sean's progression is going to be interesting to see because he's one of the, he's basically the longest tenured member on the Bears coaching staff right now because he's survived Trestman, he survived John Fox. I mean, Matt Nagy kind of convinced him to stay around. But switching over to the offensive side of the ball here, what's interesting is when you talk to Bears players from last year compared to this year, one of the common themes last year seemingly just seemed to be that they felt like there was a two QB system being run with Trubisky and Foles. We're seeing a lot of the same this year. So what are your expectations for the offense going into 2021, knowing that there's another two QB system that's being run? Because what Andy Dalton does is so different from what Justin Fields can do. Um, well, when Andy Dalton's in, this is what I expect. Against weak teams, I expect for Andy Dalton to play fairly decent. Um, against strong defensive teams or teams that they have strong offenses and they have to play catch up, um, I probably expect for Andy Dalton offense to fail because Matt Nagy is the guy calling the plays. Um, I, I have to say this until Justin Fields is in there and it's really off of Justin Fields doing things off structure that I think may benefit the Bears because I th as of right now, Matt Nagy lacks a rhythm when it comes to his offensive play call. It's just, it's disconjointed. It's, it, sometimes it just doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? It's, there's no setup to it, you know? So, and he hasn't shown me that now he understands and it's different. We saw the difference from when Bill Lazor, the first Bill, few Bill Lazor games, and then we start asking, wait, Matt Nagy's back involved in this. You just could tell just watching it. Uh, you saw what Bill, Bill Lazor had rhythm. There's a there's a there's this type of dance that's going on in offense when you when you're setting up that defense. Um, so I expect the offense to be. I think it's it'll be decent, but the question still is: Are you going to run the run the rock? Like the the fact that Matt Nagy has an apprehension about being totally devoted to running the football, it is it, always going to make his uh, his offense questionable in, in my in my opinion. Yeah, the, and the running game is such an interesting point when it comes to Matt Nagy because when Bill Lazor steps in, David Montgomery does incredibly just off the charts compared to his yards per carry when Matt Nagy was calling the plays and calling the run calls, the very few of which he was giving David Montgomery. Bill Lazor put his trust in David Montgomery to move the ball. David Montgomery performed behind practice squad offensive linemen who one of them is now our starting center. So I think the fact that Bill Lazor trusts his personnel more than Nagy does speaks volumes to who he is as a character in this offense. And seeing how he allowed Mitch Trubisky to kind of just run bootleg after bootleg after bootleg to get Mitch warm, and that's his that's what he's good at is off the off the run bootlegs first read if the guy's open if not then I'll hit the check down like million times in a row. It's exactly what Bill Lazor called for Mr. Bisky. I was doing tape review on Cole Komet. Every single pass Cole Komet got, about eight to nine of them were the same exact play against four different teams. So hmm. Bill Lazor knows what his quarterback's like. Bill Lazor obviously had success with Andy Dalton. I don't understand this whole concept of Matt Nagy returning to play calling when you have Lazor and Dalton back together, um, especially with John Filippo there as well. Uh, it doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, for, for, for Matt Nagy outside of his own ego. And I think that's something right. that a lot of Bears player and Bears commenters don't talk about is, is the, knee, the ego of Matt Nagy. 
Um, there's a little bit something there that I think is going to be a little a talking point this year. Uh, just kind of how he responds to some questions and to some comments as this year develops. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's sad because there is some really good talent on this offense. And I'm going to keep saying this throughout the year uh, that I want to see guys like David Montgomery succeed because he deserves to succeed because how much work he's put in over the past two years. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully, this is my personal opinion. I think I, I think Matt Nagy is, is, an, is an overall OK to, 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 to serviceable head coach. But I don't think he's a great offensive play caller. I, I just don't mm-hmm. like if I see another triple option on a second and goal at the 10 yard line, I'm going <laughs> to scream. I'm going to scream. Or if I see another all out fade route from the five yard line in a third and goal scenario, it's 2021. We're not playing Madden. Like get off the sticks and give it to somebody else. This is, this is a new year. This is a whole new era of football. Matt Nagy stuck in 2016 with Kansas city and Alex Smith. So that's my opinion when it comes to him play calling, but hopefully some things get different with Justin Fields just playing like it's arcade and Madden. Um, but outside of the offense, outside of the defense, what other factors, be it external or internal, uh, do you think will define the 2021 Chicago Bears season? Justin Fields. Let's be honest. It's Justin Fields. Um, it's it's really – did he develop this year? Because the crazy thing is this. This year can easily turn into – are we playing to win? Or are we playing to get Justin Field time out there to develop, depending on their record and when Justin Fields takes over for under center? Um, but it, he's the biggest story. And then it would be probably the offensive line. Um, if Tevin Jenkins is coming back or not, I would think um, would be probably the, the largest stories. I think the defense is going to be good, you know, so – I mean, I think that will be a story, but, I mean, we expect for this defense to be good. It's too many names on this defense. Like, I mean, there's names on every level, you know, so defense should be good, but it's, it's definitely Justin Fields. And I'll say this, too. Um, I think one thing, and I, 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 it got better, but I'm worried. I'm worried about Tabor and special teams. And you mentioned as far as the history of having uh, uh, someone back there, a nice return person back there. But one thing, and I think mostly last year we really paid attention to it, that we forget about Cordero Patterson as a gunner. Like Cordero Patterson was gunning and getting his butt down there. And I, I worry because this, this could get real bad quick if the third phase is sad and sorry, you know, and it, 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 you don't get enough time during preseason to really check out the, you know, the special teams. But I'm, I'm interested in seeing how coverage coverage wise because that, that Dolphins against the Dolphins and the Bills. Initially when they were playing the Dolphins, I was like, hey, the Dolphins got two nice special team guys. And then when it was the Bills, I was like, wait, hold up now. Like, what's going on with special teams? So those are my three. Justin Fields, the line, and special teams I feel like will be uh, maybe be biggest storylines of the season. Yeah, the special teams I feel like was kind of – I mean, it's been just been inconsistent over the last couple of years. You Are you too inconsistent to really be consistent to justify kind of being – a strong third phase because it's like they either make th- the Bears or sometimes even break them depending on how important you think special teams is. But I have to ask you, I mean, was there anything that you saw in training camp that you may th- think like, okay, that's something that's intriguing. That's something that could certainly play a major factor going into 2021? Yeah, lack of tackle. Um, that that scares me. And I, I know it's, it's preseason. And, I mean, if you play football, guys really don't have their football skin on yet. But the, a lack of time. It's nothing worse than your defender being there and thinking that you're gonna that offensive player is going to be brought down and that player just gets up out of it because you threw your shoulder, you didn't wrap up. Um, tackling in the preseason kind of was something that stood out to me because it, it, it makes me wonder, okay. Cause I think during a lot of training camp, we were feeling the vibes on the defense. And then when you saw the lack of people getting wrapped up, it was like, hold up now. So when it, I think it's that's that's one thing from training camp that I always pay attention to is are they wrapping up and are they game tackling? Yeah, that's a, that's a big concern. Uh, the number one thing was seeing players who historically are good at open field tackles, like Kendall Vilder, who kind of made his name last year on some solid open field tackles uh, against rushing, uh, rushing games. Um, 
he just completely whiffed on almost every opportunity he had to bring someone down for a tackle for loss or, or, or make a third in, in, in five, a, a first down. Um, it, it was a little strange. And I mean, that's something that we, in, in my opinion, it started like the buck stops with Sean Desai there is you can have fun. You can make it as educational as possible. You can have complex secondary schemes, but if you, none of it matters if you don't get the fundamentals of wrap your guy up, I want to see five to six blue helmets surrounding the ball carrier at any given moment. If that's not there, nothing else works. And that was what was so great about the Fangio defense was there were huddles of guys around the ball carrier. And what that leads to is, guess what? Now I can slip a hand in there and I can rip that ball away. So it it wasn't there in the preseason. You're completely right. Like it takes a while to kind of get back into that. Okay, I have I'm hitting people every day mentality. Um, or at least I'm running into a brick wall every five minutes now mentality. Um, and 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 once once we get there, I think we'll we'll really get a good idea week one, week two of whether or not this defense has the basic fundamentals down. And you're right, there's too many names on this on this defense to not do well this year. Uh, and there's too many names on this defense who have wrapped up in the past that have no excuse to not do it this year as well. So that'll definitely be, definitely be a storyline to watch in the season. So let's see what else we have. Uh, Let's okay. So you said something that I want to kind of circle back on, and then we'll go into the predictions here for, for the record. Before we jump into that, you, you mentioned something about Sean Desai kind of alluding towards he's been here a while. Is he coaching for this year? Is he potentially coaching for next year? Because uh, there's something that I was thinking about, and this was just watching the 1920 football drives that the organization put out. The way that he's connecting, Sean Desai is connecting with the players. The way that he's talking with the players, communicating with the players, as compared to the way that Matt Nagy's been. It seems like Sean Desai at any moment can step into that locker room and command the entire room's attention. It seems like he already has that ability, that players are just wanting to listen to him, wanting to speak to him, wanting to talk to him. They're, he's making them laugh. He's giving them good times. They bought, brought out a slam dunk bucket, kind of, you know, a little a little thing like the club dub or whatever. But to me, that seems like Sean Desai knows he could be the head coach in a year to two years if he wanted to be at the Chicago Bears. Could you see that happening? Coach Desai becoming the replacement to Matt Nagy? I've thought about this um, because I think we all have biases for the Bears. So with side to side taking over this job, also, again, like I said, they, they got names. He's, he's not taking over. He's not taking over the team, the defense that Vic Fangio took over. You know, like he's he's taking on like a, a it's, you got guys on there. Um, I think this would be the I, and I thought I thought that I was like, wait, if he if he's good and we keep getting the same out of Matt Nagy. Would Ryan Pace replace him with Matt Nagy? I think one, it depends on how many teams come knocking for Sean Desai prior to then. You know, if he's get if he's on the list, and I mean legitimately on list, not Rooney ruling, you know, because he's a person of color, but legitimately on lists to be interviewed, yeah, then he's gonna he he's the, the, Ryan Pace to move him over. But if he's not getting interviewed before, prior to then. I think Ryan Pace, because look, Ryan Pace has no more cover. I think we, excuse me, I think we all feel like right now, because of Justin Fields, basically, Ryan Pace may have some cover, right? To where at the end of last year, it was like throw them both out, the baby and the bathwater, as far as Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace. Ryan Pace has a little bit more cover because he brought nice groceries home for Matt Nagy to, 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 to cook up, right? But would Ryan Pace risk the remainder of perhaps his time as, 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 as head of the running the Bears to, to, to put in a rookie, another rookie head coach, ra- rather than going with someone who has a proven track record to save his ass? So uh, that's really, that's, I think that, I hope that answers your question, Max. I think it's a chance if he performs well, but I don't think that Ryan Pace is going to put him at the head coaching positions, unless other teams have already told him that we view him as a head coach. Yeah. He's going to be one of those guys that it could end up being so hard to retain. I mean, I believe I saw something where, and I think it was Sean who kind of said this, where a couple of years ago when Vic Fangio got the job in Denver, Sean was about to get up and leave. And then Matt Nagy was like, hey, if you stay here, you will be a defensive coordinator in the NFL someday because of all the talent potential that you have. But, I mean, I got to ask you, the Bears have such a tough schedule 
going into 2021. It's definitely, when we talk about strength of schedule, one of the top five hardest ones on there. I mean, what's your win-loss prediction for the Bears? And then what are some of the toughest games going into the season? <sighs> 89, you know, I think, I mean, all right, so – I, I think I have – I probably have Green Bay winning both. They should beat Detroit twice because Detroit doesn't have Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford, at least at times, could keep them in it, right? So, right, that gives me – if I they, that guy uses them two. They're probably going to split with the Vikings. That's three. Um, let's see. They play the Rams, so that means they play the NFC West. Wait, I don't – They do they play the car? I don't have a schedule in front of me. They play the cars this year, correct? That yep. may be the only team in the NFC West that they beat. Um, maybe they beat Seattle. Um, man, I think, for instance, they play – we play Tampa again this year, don't we? Mm-hmm. Um, I think Tampa – I think Tom Brady's going to come here trying to prove so, – I mean, well, they'll be there. Uh, I think they're going to get their asses handed to them in Tampa Bay. Um, I think, listen, this, this Rams game – could go left really fast this Sunday evening. All right, like, re- I mean, because, I mean, it's a team that people have talked about as being a, 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 a contender. And, I mean, think of if you're a Sean McVay fan, now he finally has a quarterback, right? And I was just talking about, um, it's funny, when you, when you mentioned earlier how old this Bears team is at 27. And I was talking to someone, I was talking to my show, that David show, to my uh, executive producer, Ryan. And I was saying, don't you remember like three years ago how with all the money the Rams were spending for Akeem to leave and Peters, how it was like, man, they're capped out. They're not going to be able to do anything. They had – and Donna suit. they flipped the whole thing. And they didn't just flip the whole thing. I mean, they have Jalen Ramsey now. Now they have Matthew Stafford too. Like, you can do it, you know, but I don't think we could do it here. Um, yeah, I think, the, I think the Packers game is going to be a buking. I definitely think the the Rams game could be could, it could be a hard one. I see the, the the Tampa Bay game. Tom Brady trying to get us back for his forgetful me- memory. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think Tom Brady's gonna try. Like, and you know he he amps himself up with stuff like that, right? Like, oh yeah, they just you know just hyping himself with madness. Um, well, let me. Who, who else is on the schedule? Give me who else is on the schedule, real quick. So we have uh, our friend Lamar Jackson. And the Ravens. Uh, you know um, what? I th- I like the Bears' chances against the Ravens. We have the uh, either Jimmy Garoppolo or, or uh, Jalen – sorry, not Jalen Hurts, Trey Lance and 49ers. We have Baker Mayfield and the Browns. Uh, we have Derek Carr's Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, we have old man Big Ben Roethlisberger at the Steelers. And then uh, we have our friends – uh, the New York Giants, who so graciously gifted us Justin Fields. So I mean, you you put some. There's some victories on there. You just said too. I think the Bears can beat the Steelers if the Bears are on their game. I think the Bears can beat the Ravens. To be honest with you, if they can keep if they can keep Lamar to 40 yards rushing, maybe you know, like if you can if you can kind of bracket him in, I think the Bears may be able to beat them. Um, the Giants are just that's a I, I, I know the Bears are going to lose after I say this. That's a catwalk. All right. So now the Bears have lost that game, clearly, after I just said it's a catwalk. Uh, the, the, and the Raiders, man, the Bears owe the Raiders for what took place in London. Um, you got to go back because they remember the Raiders went on a winning streak after that one. Um, yeah. I mean, the, 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 listen, that, that Cleveland game. Woo, and I'm not a Baker Mayfield's fan, but they are low. It's they're ridiculously loaded to say at every level. And listen, that's the great thing about having a, a, a rookie QB on a rookie contract, right? But they, I mean, it's dude, they got the Newsome kid now opposite of, of Ward, right? As far as their DBs, you got the Davion Clowney opposite Miles Garrett. They drafted the linebacker too. I mean, they're stacked. Look, how dare you have Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb, right? Like it's, Oh my goodness, man! That that team is stacked. I, I mean, I think the Bears could beat them because I'm not a Baker Mayfield guy, but the the, the Browns are probably gonna beat the Bears to say the least. 
Browns gonna beat the Bears. Yeah, and and let me just add this on. I mean, the Browns were losing for so many years, and all of a sudden they have two down years with Baker Mayfield, and then they hire Andrew Barry, who brings in Kevin Stefanski, and so everyone I think talks about the players on the Browns. You know, it's because of guys like Biles Garrett and Jadavian Clowney and Odell Beckham Jr. I mean, we can't forget that great teams are not just built by great players. Great teams are built as a result of great front offices, too. And then the last AFC North team that I think should be an easy given for the Bears, an easy W, because I think it's going to be the Andy Dalton revenge game, is Cincinnati at home in week two. I mean, <laughs> They've Cincinnati, they added <coughs> Joe Burrow's best friend in Jamar Chase. And I was covering Jamar during his pro day at LSU. And he basically didn't even rule out reuniting with Joe Burrow and Cincy. That connection's back. But the Bengals really don't have that strong of an offensive line. It's an okay defense. It's not a great defense. I mean, people that I know who cover the Bengals are basically saying, hey, Zach Taylor's on the hot seat going into 2021. Hmm. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just say this is my biggest thing just looking at this schedule is, of course, we have one of the toughest ranked schedules. And the reason why is because of the quarterbacks and the passing games that we're playing this year. And why that makes me so nervous is because our lack of names at the DB side of the ball and the lack of proven <laughs> talent at that side of the ball. So when I see Tom Brady put four fingers up when he scores his fourth touchdown in the third quarter against this secondary – uh, I'm just going to turn the TV off and silently cry into my pillow, uh, just like I did in that game in London. That probably was the most frustrating game I think the Chicago Bears have played in my lifetime, and there have been many. Uh, but that one literally made me scream, and I think that was the referee's fault. But I don't know. Maybe they had a little bit of jet lag there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we're playing Tom Brady. We're, we're playing Aaron Rodgers twice. We're playing Jimmy G. Or we're, or we're playing Trey Lance. We're playing Lamar Jackson. We're playing Kyler Murray. We're playing Russell Wilson, uh, Daniel Jones, like it or not, the New York Giants have an incredibly talented wide receiver room for Danny, Danny Dimes now. He has no excuses to fail. Um, we're playing Derek Carr. Whether you like him or not, he's a solid quarterback who just happens to be on a bad team. Uh, we are playing good passing games, our passing attacks. And this will really be a year for Sean Desai to either say, I am a secondary guru or – Please, Jesus Christ, I need help on the secondary side of the ball. Give me players, draft, Ryan Pace, please, whoever, trade whoever. Just I need help. That's really, I think, going to be one of the major storylines here on the defensive side of the ball is the front seven are going to eat because they're just that good. But what are we doing on the backside? Uh, hopefully we don't get absolutely decimated, as, as I think we will. I was on a Giants uh, podcast just a couple days ago because they're interested. They, I gave a season preview because they have our first-round pick. So they were like, oh, is it going to be like a five? Is it going to be like a ten? I said, well, I don't think it's going to be top five because we have the Detroit Lions in our in our division. So rule that out. We have two instant wins there. Um, but I do I do think we could we could find ourselves giving them a tenth round pick, uh, maybe even at eleven, which would be kind of funny. Um, I just don't see us really doing this well. I, I honestly think this is a year that we have some gimmies, but I don't think we're gonna I don't think we're gonna walk away with them. Uh, I, I you know I, I I'm trying to be cautiously optimistic, but I just I don't see. I just don't think see things clicking. Like I'm a little bit of a pessimist this year, which hurts. Um, but I just look at the schedule. I look at the state of our offense and I go, I, I just don't know. You know, everyone's like, oh, we have so much speed at the wide receiver core. Okay, cool. But we don't have an offensive line to protect our quarterback. We don't know who our quarterback is right now. We have five tight ends on the roster for some reason. Um, what are we, what are we doing? Oh, and we have Matt Nagy calling plays. So to me, that doesn't spell success. I feel you. Max, this sounds like facts to me. A little, see, I wasn't angry when I started, but here I am now. I can a see you kind of you, you're lathering yourself up right there. You start exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, so with that, I guess we'll just one last question: Is uh, what are the storylines around the league are you interested in watching develop this year? You know what? I'm a huge Patrick Mahomes fan. Stan, I should say Stan. I call yeah. him Baby Goat. <laughs> I don't I, look. Uh, common sense should tell to say, just pencil in Kansas City into the to the Super Bowl. I, something something tells me no. It just I don't know what it is. It's just I guess it's because I mean I, I I am old enough to have seen the Bills go four times in a row. And believe me, by the third time it was like, please not the Bills again. Like please, like it was like not the Bills. The fourth time it was like not the Bills. Right. 
And I wish they had won one because that team has slept on historically because they didn't actually just win one. They had a, a nice roster on that team. Um, but I don't – I feel like somebody – I feel like somebody's going to knock I, – I feel like someone's going to knock the Kansas City Chiefs off or the Kansas City Chiefs are going to have a bad game at the wrong time. So I think that, that we're going to see perhaps two teams in the Super Bowl that weren't there last year because I don't I, – it's hard for me to say Tampa's going to run it back. But the NFC – is basically wide open. I mean, you only have three, four legit teams. You got the Rams. You have definitely Tampa Bay. You have the. It's, and it's, you keep saying the 49ers. I love Kyle Shanahan. I, he let, he makes running the ball sexy. A lot of people can't do that. But the the fact that m- majority of this season there's a chance they may have a quarterback out there who's really green and Trey Lance. And I'm, I'm I want to Trey Lance because I didn't think the Bears had it a hell of a chance of getting Justin Fields. Now, this was two, This was like a year or two ago when you're just starting to see where who could the Bears get, and you're like, hey, yeah, the, that quarterback, the Dakotas kid, he may fall in the teens or whatever, right? Um, but they like their quarterback situation is still up for grabs, and even though they're kind of replacing Jimmy and Jimmy got into a Super Bowl, you still have a rookie raw. Like he's Out of all these quarterbacks in his draft, the five taken, he's the rawest of all of them. And, I mean, he didn't even play last year. Let's forget the one game. He didn't even play last year, you know. So I think that I think the Super Bowl is going to not have Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady in it is my storyline for this season. And I I think that guy that's going to knock Patrick Mahomes out is is Josh Allen. And if only he was on those 90s build teams. Right. Totally. (laughs) Listen, I I think this, to be honest with you, I think that Kansas is going to get knocked out before they meet the Bills. Before, because I, I, I actually think the Bills are going to make it, right? Mm-hmm. I think someone's going to knock them out. I don't think it's going to be the AFC Championship game. So I think it's going to be the Bills and someone we necessarily didn't expect. I could be wrong. But, yeah, Josh Allen, it's funny. Uh, we have um, from uh, Pro Football Weekly here, uh, we have the great hub, Arkish. And I had him on my show years back, right? This, the, this is when the draft was coming out, 2018. And I had Josh Allen over Baker Mayfield. And I was like, Hub, Hub, tell me if I was wrong. He was like, yeah, you're wrong. You know, this kid is inaccurate and all this and all that. I was like, I like the kid. He can run and he has a cannon, right? So I was I was in on Josh Allen, but I never thought he was going to be this. You know, like, yeah. that's crazy right there. Like, I mean, and the cannon, oh, my, it's ridiculous. Like, so I don't think – I think the teams that we expect to be in the Super Bowl aren't going to be in the Super Bowl this year. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Um, and 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 before before we wrap everything up today, we want to say thank you so much. And uh, if you ever get the chance to talk to Alex Brown again, tell him that I said thank you. Uh, back when I went to his football camp, I think I was in seventh grade. I got a concussion, and he paid for my ambulance bill and the ER visit, and got me a brand new Zenith helmet right when they came out. I didn't get to keep it, but I felt like I was worth a million dollars. And he gave me an honest auto, autograph ball back. This was when he was with the Saints, but he was still local in the area. It was at Benedictine. While back, so if you ever get the chance, tell him I said thank you. Wait, wait, wait. You <laughs> got knocked out. Guy. Wait, you got wait, wait. Tell me, you got to set this up before I leave here, real quick. What happened? Well, tell me what happened. Real so I, I was like a double striper, so I was a big kid. I'm still like a pretty big guy, um, but I was going up against like kids that were four to five years older than me that were in varsity high school programs that were being scouted, and it was Oklahoma, so it was basically how hard can you get your bell wrong. And uh, I got my bell rung hard by a kid I was going to, I think he was going to ISU. I think it was an ISU commit. Um, and I just got absolutely destroyed. Uh, they didn't know how old I was. So they just threw me in there because I was like this big chunky kid. And they're like, oh, he's probably old enough. And uh, yeah, th- I-, I lost. So <laughs> listen, the scare, one of the scariest things in football is the Oklahoma drill. Yeah. All right. Dude, once you, once you turn around and jump up, it's all it's, it's your foot. Oh my god, I'm happy, and I'm not saying it's bragging. I'm happy I never lost because man, it is scary, right? It is scary. The the worst part was uh, I, I was a trained lineman, so I'm not used to running head like straight on for a guy. I'm used to taking Definitely. a step back and getting ready to get hit first. So it was, it was a little weird for me. Um, oh, I never even thought about that, that way. Oh, you shouldn't have. So, wait, wait, you got knocked out. And the, you, your helmet was cracked, I take it, since you had to get a new helmet? Is that I, I, I don't remember. I know I woke no. up. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was in I was in the uh, ambulance, and Alex was there. Uh, and then he was with me in the uh, hospital room until my parents could get there. 
Uh, and then when I got back, they gave me a helmet replacement. So I guess it was cracked. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a smooth, it was like driving a Ferrari compared to that right. old uh, styrofoam. Right. Right now I, I, had, remember so. this. I remember this, Max, because definitely during the season with under center, we will be having the guys from the football after show join us on the under center. So when Alex comes back on, I'm definitely gonna be like, man, you were in a, you went in an ambulance with the kid that got knocked out in Oklahoma Drew. He told me thank you, and you made him feel like a million bucks. His name yeah. is Max Smith. Yeah, yeah, I still have a ball. He signed, gave me a signed ball. Uh, it was a, it was a Saints ball because that was when he was towards the end of his career with the New Orleans. Uh, but yeah, no, I'll, I'll never forget that moment. It was like my claim to fame. I was like, yeah, this is why I love the Chicago Bears as an organization so much. He doesn't even play for the Bears anymore, but he still made sure that. Uh, local kid was okay. So thank you, Alex. And thank you, uh, Kenneth, for, for joining the show today. <laughs> thank you both. I appreciate it. Um, listen, terrific show. Anytime you need me, just let me know, guys. Absolutely. Thanks so much for being on. And guys, we're going to get out of this thing, but make sure you're following us on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram at Fireside Bears. Make sure you're following Ken on Twitter at That's Davis. And be sure for, you're following myself and Max on Twitter at Max Smith ESM and at Usaid Kosho. We'll be back on Friday morning. We're going to be previewing the Bears Rams games. But until then, guys, bear down, stay safe, and have a great rest of your day. Peace out.